Greetings guys, girls, and non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. Today's video uh, was inspired by me going through my old videos and deciding I wanted to do this. And that is looking at some more pick me gays, some conservative queers. Obviously conservative queer people exist, obviously. I'm about to talk about them. Sometimes it's a little bit contradicting. I personally don't understand. It's just, it's very interesting because most of the time they are like white cis men and obviously they're still at like the top of the ranking within like the gay hierarchy. You know what I mean? Like misogyny and like transphobia and stuff doesn't apply to them. So not that they have it easy. Obviously they're still oppressed and stuff, but it is an interesting note that a majority of them are white cis men. So we're gonna be looking at some of their TikToks. A few of them are the same people we looked at last time just because I, they say some stuff and I need to talk about it. So we are going to talk about it together because that's what, that's what I'm here for. Uh, before we get into it though, I would like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor. Me, I am today's sponsor. <laughs> I'm taking this moment to tell you to go subscribe to my second channel. A lot of you I don't know I have a second channel because I always forget to plug it at the start of my videos, but go subscribe to my second channel. It's Kiwi, uh, Q-U-I-W-I. -I. I was going to do Q-I-W-I, -I, um, but that is the name of a cigarette brand. So I decided to not do that. Basically, it's just a place for me to do different videos uh, because they don't perform very well on this channel because of the algorithm and stuff. So I'm just doing a bunch of different stuff over there. It ranges from like, I've got a q and A. I I did some gay quizzes. I made some playlists, did some tier lists. And I'm also moving my Jubilee and Cut series over to there. So I just did a cut video where I had to guess the straight people. That was a lot of fun. Um, so if you wanna watch that and see more of that style of video, then go over and subscribe to the second channel. I would really, really appreciate it. So yeah, cool. And while I'm promoting myself, go follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi. Don't follow me on Twitter because my Twitter is a mess. Um, but if you want, if you want to, it's that Queer Kiwi. You should follow me on Instagram though. Highly recommend. My Instagram's great. I post on my story all the time. I'm really annoying. So if you wanna be annoyed by me, go, go follow me on Instagram. Anyway, uh, moving on. Let's look at some TikToks from some conservative queers. But you don't look gay. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold, let me just. Honey, leftists aren't saying that to you. <laughs> Our whole thing is that you can be who you want to be and express yourself how you want to be. We're constantly saying that there are mask gays and femme gays and uh, whatever. The whole thing that we have going on is that you don't have to be a specific way in order to be queer. That's often, as far as I'm aware, what conservatives try to say. They're the ones putting us in boxes. Leftists aren't telling you you don't look gay. Don't make, don't lie. As a black conservative, liberal Democrats are a bigger threat to my life than a white supremacist. Mainly because liberal Democrats are the white supremacists. If you're calling me a traitor to my race and trying to shut my speech down simply because I don't subscribe to being a victim who needs your help, you are a white supremacist. I don't think you have privilege over me simply because of your skin color. I do think I can be successful regardless of any obstacles in my life. Stop thinking I need your help. I don't think you're supreme to me. Get over yourself. Now this is not to do with being queer. He is a gay man, so I did include this in here because I think that it's like important to talk about, is that thing of like, people don't want to believe that they are victims of oppression, right? Because that's a really difficult thing to come to terms with, admitting that, you know, it's going to be harder for you and like understanding and accepting that is like a very difficult thing to do. That's not something that you want to do. It's not something you want to think about or accept. And so it makes sense that you would deflect that. The thing is, is that, we're not saying that people of color can't be successful. Obviously, there are a lot of very successful people of color. There are obviously some people of color who were in higher positions than some white people. Obviously, that's how it is. The problem is, is you can look at it and you can see the disproportionate rate of people of color to white people within those successful positions. And you can see that it takes people of color a lot longer and they have to work a lot harder in order to achieve that. And some of it, a lot of it comes down to 
the socioeconomic situation and the fact that a lot of people of color are born into uh, the working class. It's a cycle. There's like a class divide and a race divide and they're very, very tightly linked. And so a lot of people of color are born into positions with less privilege and less opportunity and they aren't able to get the education that they deserve and then they aren't able to get the jobs that they would normally be able to get and so it's it's this awful cycle of it's just much harder to receive the opportunities and even in the situation where you are a person of color and you are in the exact same position as a white peer you are less likely to achieve that because of racism. You can still be successful, it is just harder because there are less opportunities given to you and you are less likely to be chosen. And it's really fucked up and it's really upsetting and that's what we're trying to fight against. You absolutely can be successful. You absolutely can be. And we are not superior to you. White people are not superior to you. That is the whole thing that we're trying to say. Um, and just because you yourself don't personally think that you are mistreated and you don't think that you are treated as lesser than your white counterparts doesn't mean that other people aren't. You can look at statistics, you can look at how it is and know. Um, but I understand that that's a really hard thing to accept. You can't invalidate other people's experiences. Talking over other people of colour isn't going to help you. Because a lot of people of colour are talking about racism too. It's not just white people saying that racism exists. It's people of colour sharing their experiences and us trying to uh, elevate their voices. Are you ready for some liberal indoctrination to your kids? Recently DC Comics revealed that Superman will be bisexual in the November issue. They said he will in fact be in a same-sex relationship while combating the climate crisis and protesting against the deportation of refugees. The series writer said the idea of replacing Clark Kent with another straight white savior felt like a missed opportunity. Now as a gay man, I find this absolutely disgusting. The fact that they are trying to force feed the gay agenda down children's throats at such a young age is absolutely despicable. I don't believe that children should be involved in any sexual topic, whether it's straight or gay. Not only are they force-feeding this gay agenda down children's throat, they're also trying to politicize the children with refugee protesting and climate change. There's absolutely no need to involve children in any of those topics in a comic book. Also, should we point out the stereotypical gay that they used? Like, what is this? Shame on you if you let your child read this. Okay, so the fact that you're making being gay sexual is really strange. They're just in a relationship. There's nothing like sexual about that. Uh, you wouldn't be having the same problem if they were a heterosexual couple, which is so strange considering you are a gay man and I'm sure you would have liked to see some representation as a child. This is all about normalizing being queer for children. It is normalizing gay relationships for children, whether that be straight children in order to, you know, grow up to be more accepting and know that it's normal, or gay children knowing that they are normal. It's not forcing a gay agenda on anyone, it's just saying gay people exist. Look, even superheroes can be gay. That's not a gay agenda, that's not sexual, there's nothing about that that's wrong in any way, that's just people, it's just relationships, and it's really weird for you to like claim that that's bad or evil or disgusting in any way. I, mm? Secondly, there is always morals in comic books and in stories. A lot of the time there's like anti-communism shit that's like hidden in there. It's like going after Russians who are always spying and who are always evil because goddamn commies. That's a political thing. It's just a conservative political view. There is always some form of politics in these comics, in these things, there's always a driving motive, there's always something, there's always a lesson to be learned within kids' content. Like, my favorite movies ever are always kids' movies because they're always so fun and they always have a good message. There's always something to learn from kids' content because that is the point. The point of kids' content is to be educating children in a fun and receivable way way. That is the point. And I don't think this is aimed for like small children. It's aimed for like, uh, like preteens type thing. I don't really know, but that's, that's what I would imagine. And that's a time where it is important to know these things. 
And it's not done in a way that's made, meant to make you fear it. It's done in a way to make you understand it. You know what's going on and you're being educated about it. You learn about it at school and it's important to know. I started learning about global warming in year two. When we were six, we started learning about global warming. That is a thing that we need to do. That is a thing that you need to be aware of. That That is what we should be learning. Children do need to know about that. It doesn't have to be in a really intense way. We're not teaching children to have to go out and like protest and shit. It's just about being aware and there's nothing wrong with that. That's not indoctrinating children. That's not like abusing them. It's still letting them be kids. Kids aren't stupid. They deserve to have an understanding and know what's going on. And like learning that in a fun, relatable way is really cool and really important. And you shouldn't have an issue with that. It's really weird. Don't let kids be kids and let them also understand the world that they live in. And it's, listen, I understand it's like a stereotypical gay, but, uh. Firstly, he's not even the Superman. Do you see the Superman, right? He's not a stereotypical gay. Listen, <laughs> it's saying that you can't have like a gay character with pink hair because that's stereotypical is so strange because gay people with pink hair exist. They also, I'm sure would have straight characters with pink hair too. It doesn't matter. It's just self-expression. Get over it. Sean the non-believer. Sean. Yeah. I don't really know what's going on in this video. Um, like at all. I don't understand what you're trying to convey here. What's your point? Um, you're making fun of leftists for caring about things. Is that what's going on? You're just making fun of leftists for caring about things and for standing up for things where you just sit back and let life happen and continue to let people be oppressed um cis white man is that what you're saying because you're not proving anything what's an opinion you have that might piss some people off you don't have a right to free health care because you don't have a right to the labor that it takes to provide the health care itself and you don't have a right to the labor that it takes to pay the taxes that will pay for that health care you only have a right to things that are inherent to you, that can't be taken away, like your right to free speech, your right to freedom of religion. You don't have a right to require other people to work, to pay taxes, to pay for things that you don't want to pay for. But you do have the right to live, right? Is it my right to be alive and my right to continue breathing? Because I would, I think that I have a right to be alive. That, that is something uh, that I think we all have the right to. And I always find it so rich when Americans say this shit because how much money do your taxpayers spend on the fucking military? Literally trillions of dollars. You're making people work and putting their money into like death and destruction and a fuckload of military weapons that you don't need, but refuse to help fund people's health care. You're letting people die or go into like bankruptcy and debt just to stay alive. That's so messed up, man. If my taxpayer money was being used for the military, I also would hate paying taxes because that's so stupid. That's ridiculous. I already get upset with taxes sometimes because I don't agree with half the shit our government spends money on, uh, like parties in the middle of COVID and like $60 million yachts. I, listen, there are some things I don't agree with how our money is spent and that's nowhere near as bad as what the American government spends their money on. If you think that it's okay for your government to spend money on military and not on medical care, that's fucked up. And it's not about people not wanting to pay for healthcare and health treatment. It's people literally can't afford to. You're like, Prices of medical care is so phenomenally expensive. It is absolutely unreal. Something I don't think Americans understand is that in a place where there is public health care, private health care still exists. Like that doesn't just disappear. It's not 100% publicly funded. Private health care still exists if you want private health care. Public health care means there's a lot of like waiting time. It's like prioritized. It can be really hard to get sometimes because of how many people need it, but it exists. And if you want to like get a procedure done quicker or 
uh, want like specialized treatment for a specific thing, then you pay for it and you can do that. When I had my tonsils out, I got that done privately because it was like a two year waiting list if I wanted to do it publicly. And my health insurance covered private healthcare. And so like when I went to like a dermatologist and my knee specialist and my sister goes to like an arm doctor, uh, that's all private. And so we pay for it or our health insurance pays for it. But some people don't have the luxury to be able to afford that. So they go through a public sector, which is funded by taxes, which is very important because then people don't, you know, die from completely treatable things. You just get to choose, man. <laughs> if you have the privilege to choose, you get to choose. If you want to pay for your healthcare, fucking fine. Pay for your healthcare. But some people can't afford to do that. And letting them just die is really fucked up. When Republicans take pictures, they look hot. And when liberals take pictures, they look ugly. Oh my God, burn. Oh, what am I ever gonna do? I can't recover from this. Ah, oh, oh. Also, it's so funny because I genuinely think when they talk about liberals, they mean like leftists included in that. But I think that they genuinely don't know the difference because like, I'm a leftist. I think most people watching my videos are leftists, not liberals. Liberals are annoying. Um, <laughs> but there is a difference. And I think even a lot of leftists don't know the difference. I didn't know the difference up until like COVID, up until like 2020 and on TikTok, I didn't know the difference. I thought it was just like conservative and liberal. I thought those were the only two options. I didn't know there was a difference. And I think that a lot of people don't. And I think that conservatives, often will always attack like blue haired liberals and stuff, but 99% of the time they're talking about leftists and it's really funny that they don't know the difference um, because you're not insulting me here. This isn't the burn that you think it is because you're not insulting me and I'm sure that's who you're meant to be insulting. No, the dinner's on me. Let me just grab my checkbook. Can I borrow some money? I don't understand what this is implying. Are we saying that like liberals and leftists and don't work? What? It's because we're anti-job? Um, I don't quite understand what you're doing there. There's a lot of really successful like leftists. Like a lot of people in like creative fields who are really ridiculously successful. Most of them hold liberal or leftist beliefs and they are much more successful than you will ever be. I, I, I think that you'll find that you're mistaken with this one. A lot of conservatives are the working class and are very easily manipulated into being conservative because they're told that's what they need to do in order to make money and in order to work their way up and become successful, voting conservative is what is going to get them there. Um, which is not true at all, but that is what a lot of people are told and made to believe based on the education that they get. That's just, an unfortunate fact with that. Not meant to be like a dig or anything, but a lot of people who don't have money are conservative. <sighs> wow. I have a lot of people to disappoint today. You're also a white cis man. I'm sorry to keep saying that, but you're at the top of the hierarchy of the LGBTQ plus community. You also like straight pass, right? A lot of people don't know that you're queer, but you can't tell me that you aren't oppressed if you look at like laws that exist and the way that queer people are treated. You can look at the hate crimes. You can look at laws around the world. You can look at homophobic comments and the fact that when people are openly queer and they express themselves as such, they do get granted less opportunities. They are victims of hate much more often. You cannot deny that. And living in denial doesn't make it not true. Saying that you yourself personally don't feel oppressed doesn't mean that other people are not oppressed. It's not that hard to figure out. Have some empathy. Anyway, that's the end of my video. Uh, those are all of the TikToks. I talked for way longer than I thought. I thought I'd only been here for 15 minutes, but I've been here for half an hour, so I'm gonna stop now. Oh, I get so worked up about these things. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you wanna see from me. Uh, leave a comment below about what you wanna see me do, what you wanna see me talk about, or send an email to kiwi.woo at gmail.com. It is up on the screen right now. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my second channel. I will love you forever and ever. I will give you a cookie. If you subscribe to my second channel, I will give you a cookie. 
Uh, a massive thank you to my Kiwi Fruit and Kiwi Bird channel members whose names are on the screen right now. I love you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. <laughs> and when you close your eyes, you replace.